welcome to everyone that signed up and has joined us for today's webinar at the Center for Sustainability Transitions. You might have noticed in the invitation that you received that um, there's been a slight name change um, uh, in our logo. Uh, and more of that will be shared maybe on a later stage. We might have a, a kind of official launching of the new uh, name of our center. Um, but I think it's just a, a, a pilot to say welcome to the space, everyone, and that we're growing and changing and in transition as we speak. Uh, for those of you who don't uh, are joining us for the first time, my name is Rika Preiser, and I'm a senior researcher at the Center for Sustainability Transitions at the Stellenbosch University. And we've having, we have these um, webinars every second Thursday from over lunchtime from one to two o'clock. And we've been having this since March last year, um, since lockdown started. And we've created a wonderful community and vibrant network around these discussions every second Thursday. And it's become a space where people are sharing their work and their interest and the, the wonderful things that's been happening in the past year or two. And today um, our theme is um, WRC Water Research Commission opportunities for promoting international co collaboration in water and sanitation research development and innovation. And we're very fortunate and honored to have a very special guest today, Dr. Mamo Flodin Tlachale. She is the head of the international, of international and stakeholder engagement at the Water Research Commission. And I know that she's already um, back to back <laughs> in presentations today and have to leave us a little bit earlier. So our session will be shorter than usual, but she has to be a keynote presenter at the next meeting. And she had a, a gap in her calendar in this sort of Africa Day week also, where she's been busy presenting all over. Um, Dr. Tlachali, thank you so much for joining us today and for being available. Maybe just um, if you wouldn't mind giving us a short introduction of um, your work or your, your role and your uh, just who you are and where you've been engaged in, um, for the last number of years. Okay, thank you very much, Rika, and good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, as I've been introduced, my name is Mamo Troding. <coughs> And I'm now currently based at the Water Research Commission. So a, a brief background of where and what kind of work I've done. I'm, I'm, I'm a medical scientist initially before I decided to change and look into international relations and partnerships for research and innovation. So I've got a medical um, science up to master's degree. I have done a lot of uh, policy implementation. So I've been in the South African national government in the Department of Science and Technology then. It's now called the Department of Science and Innovation. I have um, done a lot of work in building international partnership for science, technology, and engineering. But now I'm specifically focusing obviously on the water sector. So it's um, when I was at the DSI, I was working on um, all disciplines in science, but looking only at Europe partnership, but now in the Water Research Commission, I'm looking at the whole world, but focusing at the water and sanitation sector. I have also a, a background in stakeholder engagement and management, of course, because in the current WRC, I'm the head of international and stakeholder engagement. So I'm looking, I'm taking care of all the international partnerships, that is establishment of the partnerships until they are at a level where I can hand over to our technical experts. And I also take care of all the local and international collaborative partnerships. So this will be partnerships that are not um, commercial. They still sit in my unit. And lastly, my team and I are responsible for stakeholder engagement for lo both local and international stakeholders. And lastly, I enjoy um, helping out the young people. So I do a lot of mentoring and coaching. And I also sit in different platforms where we am an adjudicator for South African excellence in research and innovation, including the NSTF awards and also the um, Da Vinci Technology Top 100 awards, just to name a few. So in short, that is who I am. And currently I'm with the Water Research Commission, as I've said, and I look forward to sharing with you some of the work that we are doing in the WRC to internationalize the South African work, but also strengthen and promote working together with international partners in water sanitation research and innovation. Wow. That is briefly my introduction, Rika and colleagues, and I look forward to engagement. I'm here, I can be with you until 13.45. So I'll try to speak and still leave some time for questions. If you have any questions, otherwise, I've typed already my email address. If you'd like to contact me after the session, I'll be free to really um, have, have engagements with you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. That's that's really inspirational. When I read your bio, I mean, it, it's often like this. You contact someone for a specific reason and then you a door opens up and you see there's a whole world, you know, that that person brings with them. And I just realized that the expertise that you bring with you in this position in your role is, is really huge and diverse. And it was just amazing to, yeah, just to see that. Um, and that that kind of capacity is also part of what makes your job so special is that you have that you have to have this wider scope to be able to build partnerships. Just to say also that we are um, joined by some of our colleagues um, in the Resilient Waters project, which is a USAID funded um, project uh, of which we are also um, a kind of a stakeholder and key partner. Um, and that's also why we're interested in the work that you were doing. And um, when I saw the, the newly established or that the, the sort of the launching of the water share hub um, that you were working with, I thought, oh, this is this sounds amazing for our partners. Um, but then you also said that you were, you know, that, that's part, that's one of the sort of um, sharing and networking that you do. There's sort of an array of other things and that you'd also like to share that. So thank you very much for that. And um, just give over to your presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. And I must say that I'm happy <clears throat> to see that I, I see a lot of institutions um, that already are working with the WRC there. So you'll forgive me for, for maybe if you feel like some of the things you really know about them, just this is, will be for the interest sake of those that are not familiar with the WRC. So what I've um, tried to do, colleagues, is I'll just introduce the WRC because I was not sure if everybody is familiar with us and then just share with you our international strategy and some of the work that we do there and the networkings because Rika had um, asked me to speak on the Watershare Hub. I'll talk a bit about also that then I'll have some space for discussion and question. As I've said, I'm from the team that handles international and stakeholder engagement in the Water Research Commission. And those that are not familiar with who the Water Research Commission is, we are an entity reporting to the Minister of Human Settlements, Water and Sanitation. So we are a Department of Water and Sanitation entity. And we were established um, 50 years ago, so we're turning 50 this year. Hence, you see our logo. We are celebrating this 50th anniversary. We, but we were established to kind of guide, provide direction, funding um, of water and sanitation research in South Africa. And with that, we then have, um, for example, the annual calls that we launch uh, for research. We stimulate funding through other partnerships. We try and promote efficient transfer of information and technology that comes out of the work that we fund, enhancing knowledge and capacity building within the water sector as large. Not only in South Africa, we have a very strong focus also of international um, partnerships or building capacity in other international um, countries. So that is the WRC and our vision is really to try and make sure that we have a highly informed water decision making through science and technology at all levels in the stakeholder groups in South Africa, Africa and the world. I mean, we all know the challenges that um, South Africa and the world are having with water. It is very important that decision making is very um, factual. It is backed up by science, technology or research and innovation for us to be able to address all these water challenges that we are having. So through the partnerships that we are forming, we want to make sure that we partner with all levels that do make decision at some point in the water sector to provide the knowledge and the information that may need. And our impact areas in the Water Research Commission is, is those um, five areas. I'm not gonna read them. And we also have what we call cross-cutting issues that we normally work on, also mentioned on the left, such as the work nexus, the climate change, the circular economy, and all those other issues. And in the work that we do in the WRC, we normally make sure that whatever project that we find, it responds to one or more of these pillars that I've showed here. Those that are familiar with the WRC, we call them our knowledge tree. But what it basically means is um, a project has to touch one or more of those areas. It's either gonna be a capacity building project, it's gonna transform and, and, and um, the water sector, empower communities in the projects where we're doing projects at community level and so forth. So those are our strategic key priorities. And we are structured into two core branches, the research and development branch and the innovation and impact branch. But the main uh, business of the WRC is to really make sure that we support generation of new knowledge, sharing of existing knowledge. We contribute to building capacity and skills development in the water sector. 
and also um, contribute to the process where we facilitate product um, development and industry development through partnerships, of course. And then in the research and development uh, branch that I've mentioned, um, these are the key strategic areas at the top in the oval shapes. I'm not going to read them, but we also have um, what we call the lighthouses. So at the bottom is the lighthouses that we have. So the round ones at the top are the program or the key strategic areas within the KSA. And then at the bottom is when we're starting to build a portfolio, normally it will start as a lighthouse until it is matured enough to fall into then the bigger portfolios, the three that I've mentioned above. Um, I'm going backwards, sorry. And then we have the R&D, which is the one that will be launching our annual course, but we also have a team that is called the Innovation and Impact Branch. And in the Innovation and Impact Branch is where I'm coming from. We have the people that do business development and innovation. We have our knowledge dissemination, events, communication. We have our international and stakeholder engagement. So the, the Innovation and Impact Branch, it's really concerned with making sure that we we um, disseminate, we package the research products that are coming from the R&D sites to make sure that they reach their intended stakeholders. And where possible, we even facilitate partnerships to make sure that we facilitate uptake of those research products and innovation products. And then I just also wanted to share with you for those that are, are developing innovations that in the WRC in partnership with the Department of Science and Innovation, we have two programs which we use to accelerate, to support, to advise and to find some of the tech and innovation coming from water and sanitation in South Africa. The one is called WADA, the Water Technologies Demonstration Program, and it focuses on the water technologies, as it says, while SASTEP focuses on the, the sanitation technologies in South Africa. And of course, we have partners that we work with, um, including international and other African partners in finding and making sure that we facilitate acceleration of these innovations. I will be sharing this presentation with you so you'll be able to click on the links to visit and get more information on the platforms. So when it comes to today's topic where we're talking about how the WRC um, contributes or promotes and support internationalization of the work that is done by South Africans and ensuring that we do have uh, platforms where we can share what we're doing with others is firstly that the aim and the objective of our strategy is to really position the WRC and the South African water sector at large and influence the strategic agendas in research development in water and sanitation globally and in Africa. And what we do with our international strategy is we have three core programs, if I may call it that. The first one is joint promoting joint learning. So what we do is we will go and launch um, a research course R&D calls or innovation calls with potential partners where we support South African working with other researchers in elsewhere. And we've done, um, for example, an Africa call, some of you may be aware, <coughs> where we funded, sorry, the Water Energy Food Nexus and Climate Change Call for Africa. And we do a lot of knowledge sharing activities through webinars, workshops, dialogues, where we bring on board South African experts together with other experts globally to share the work that they are doing. And in those kind of dialogues, we normally would then also pick up what are the key issues that are emerging that the WRC and its partners could contribute or concentrate on when we launch the new set of programs. But as I've mentioned, the WRC has an annual call for proposal that we launch for local projects. And we are launching that this year, actually on the 1st of June. It's normally launched in May. There was a bit of the delay this year. However, the international calls, we launch them at any point. If an, an international partner that is jointly funding the project with us is available, we are able to join them at any time um, through my section. The next thing that we are doing is um, to make sure that we support innovation cooperation. And in this one is technology transfer. It's building uh, partnerships where we either bring funders to fund innovations that are developed in South Africa or elsewhere in Africa. We try and see how we can bring incoming innovations through the way and the SASTA programs that I've mentioned. But it's really to say, let's build a test bed of network that will be used to test and demonstrate that the innovations and technologies coming out from South Africa. And of course, if you are interested in that, you are an innovator and you'd like to, to work with us, you come through us. Um, through the processes that we have in WADA and SASTEP. 
And lastly, our international strategy focuses on capacity building, and we have a very strong interest in the African continent, as I've said, and we do individual and institutional capacity building. So here we would identify South African and other partners that have specific um, expertise of uh, training or, or, or capacity building, any exercise that they may work with us on in the African continent, and then we jointly implement those activities with. So if you are a researcher and you'd like um, to work through the WRC project with other partners, it's for you to follow us up on our Knowledge Hub. When we launch calls, you apply so that we can extend your international uh, networks. If you are an innovator and you'd like to work with us again, you come with, uh, to us through the WADA and SASTEP. And as I've said, we're trying to now establish a test bed of network where we're going to be demonstrating innovations that are coming from the African continent through our partnership with AFWA. AFWA is the African Water Association. So it's an association of African utilities. These are the water services providers. So if you are an innovator, you've been wanting to have market access, that may be an opportunity for you, but it just um, was signed off now, but another opportunity. Um, and in yellow, it was just the kind of things that we are hoping to achieve with this international partners. I'm not able to move my slides. Okay, how we partner, as I've been explaining in some of the, 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 the slides there, we either cooperate with like-minded kind of people, um, we're still maintaining our brand, but we push specific, we do joint projects, we can collaborate and really start from the beginning with the conceptualization of the work that we're doing with partners. We do coordination of efforts. I mean, we all know that, um, especially in the scientific sector, you may find that there's many partners funding water and sanitation research, but we are not talking. Therefore, we end up duplicating effort. We end up actually funding the same people for the same research. So as the Water Research Commission, we try to put partnerships together with those um, institutions that are also funding research to work together rather than working in, 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 uh, in silos and duplicating efforts. With regards to the communities of practice, as I've said, we have our lighthouses. So in the Water Research Commission, the lighthouses are our main community of practice platform, but we also then join other international and African uh, platforms. So we do, um, we are interested and we welcome partnership with knowledge generators. This will be the researchers, the innovators, the people that do uh, provide capacity building in the African continent, preferably the finance uh, guys and investors that would want to invest, especially in scaling up innovation and technologies in South Africa or the rest of the continent, and also just strategic partnerships. Sometimes you just need to be in strategic platforms where we set the research agenda so that you make sure whatever is agreed at those level will benefit the South African stakeholders at the end. So those are the kind of uh, partnership forms that we do from my team um, on behalf of the WRC and the opportunities that you can then have, I mean, also picking up also as I was speaking, you already picked that up, is uh, you can work with us in generating new knowledge or sharing your knowledge with other people outside the South African borders. And with that, we use events that could be dialogues, technical workshops, roadshows, and think tents. And we normally do make sure that we contact um, our relevant stakeholders when we plan for these activities. So if you're not yet part of our stakeholder groups, you can write to me and we'll include you in our database. But we also do that through the R&D projects or the research development and innovation projects that we find, as I've said, be it at an annual call or the calls that we do with our partners. So it's important then that you keep an eye on the WRC website so that you see when we launch these calls. But the local or the annual local call is going to be on the 1st of June. Um, communities of practice I've mentioned. We also what we have what we call reference groups in the WRC. So for each project that we find, we put a team of experts, internal and external of the WRC, to then manage that project and make sure that it delivers on what it's supposed to do. If you are interested in joining any of our um, reference groups, please do contact us. Or if you are just, for example, an expert in climate change and you like us to register you as one of the potential reference group members, you can contact me and we will do so gladly. Also important to follow us please on our social media platforms in addition to the knowledge portal because then you would be able to see all these opportunities as we launch the calls or we do the events and so forth. For the capacity building, as I've said, we're looking for people who want to be trained, who would like the opportunities to be um, to 
to update their skills or the people that would like to partner with the WRC to then implement these training activities in the African continent. You will see when you visit the WRC that we have a lot of tools, guidelines and protocols on our knowledge hub. So normally we would use those um, um, information to then build our trainings on together with our South African partners or work with our international partners to bring additional well, uh, much needed training for our water sector. For the innovation, as I've said, SASTEP and WADA are the most, um, the platforms that we use to facilitate, to advise, to find our innovations. But there is a process, of course, that innovators have to follow if they would like to be considered. There is a lot of exhibitions that we do through it and SASTEP uh, innovation pitches where we will invite potential investors to then um, find those um, innovations. For example, on the Africa Day on the 25th, we did have a um, exhibition, visual innovation pitch and exhibition during the Africa Unity for Renaissance Conference. So if you are an innovator um, and you'd like to, to see if WIDA could support you, feel free to, to contact us. Um, and the testbed network, as I've said, we are now working with AFWA to see if we can establish a testbed network that will be demonstrating innovations coming from the African continent within the African continent. But we will also open it up to other um, innovations coming outside the continent, um, should it be an innovation that would be useful for the South African and African audience. We are a member of many platforms um, or associations networks highlighted on the right hand side. I'm not going to read that out loud. What I want to focus on is what is um, the regional hub roles that we are playing because that is one of the requests I was asked to talk about. So the WRC is it's, um, a sub-Saharan regional hub for water share and I'll be talking to you about what water share is because that was the request. And then we are also the Southern Africa Regional Hub for an organization called Human Rights to Water. This is a non-profit organization um, that is really interested in training people in advocacy of how to use um, human rights-based approach to providing water and sanitation services. So the WRC is a member of Human Rights to Water, but also a Southern Africa hub for the institution. And now lastly, as I close with the Watershare, Watershare is a network of about 25 members. Um, if you are a water research institute, a university, a utility, or any research organization um, working in the water and sanitation sector, you are welcome to join Watershare. What we do there is really to say, let's put our expertise together, our lessons and all our resources to try and address local water challenges through local partnership by bringing on board whatever international partners are from the network. So it's really about delivering equitable water solutions for all. And uh, you will see that um, we have about global 25 members, as I've said. So the activities that we do there is all, it's the, exactly what is aligned to the WRC international activities. We do the knowledge sharing, we fund projects, we do um, demonstrations where possible and so forth across the member countries. And um, we have recently launched the regional hub and um, this is what I'll also talk a bit about. So Watershare, it's actually a network coordinated by KWR in the Netherlands, but we have recently launched the regional hubs. It was um, four of the regional hubs, one being the South um, Sub-Saharan Africa, as I've said, led by the WRC, we have the Latin America led by ISA. We have um, the Netherlands and the Flanders led by KWR itself and the Middle East led by Syrides. But the main aim of this watershed um, hubs, and of course I'm the contact person for the Sub-Saharan hub. So what we plan to do with the hubs is um, to build networks and connections across other institutions and people that may not necessarily be the members of watershed. Um, try to support this international collaboration, build partnerships to be able to build capacity, fund research projects, demonstrate tech and innovation, and also to just share the knowledge and the, the learning that exists within the Watershare member states. And what we will be doing, the four of us, 
as the hub host. We will be trying to work together also. So if you are a South African and African or anyone, you'd like to have partnerships, for example, with the Latin Americans, you will see that we'll be having joint sessions at some point where we have the Sub-Saharan working together with the Latin American and so forth. So the aim is to really say, let's pilot this thing, put four core regional hubs and see if it will help us to broaden up and strengthen the watershed membership and more people participating in the network. And some of the topics I thought I should just share with you that we're focusing on on watershed are highlighted there. And you will see that it really talks to also the kind of uh, the topics that I've highlighted as priorities for the Water Research Commission. And with that, I would like to stop here and take if there are any questions that you're having for me, we still have ample enough of time. But if you, I'll share the presentation so that you can all get it. But if you like to have a further conversation with the WRC to get more um, time to talk with us to see how you can work or contribute to the work that we're doing, feel free to contact myself or my respective managers if you are only interested in international or local um, opportunities and partnerships. So that is what I had prepared um, for today. And I am happy to take any questions if there are any questions that you may have. Thank you, Thank you very much, um, Mama Flooding, for comprehensive um, presentation. And it's amazing to see all the creative ways in which partnership um, needs to be established or you know can be established um, in in the space to to connect people and to like you said share and learn so that we don't reinvent the wheel because I think that's that's really a you know a huge capacity to be able to leverage uh, shared learning and shared resources instead of everyone you know starting from the beginning again to try and you know, connect with these things um part of a um, another research project which is about looking at interesting and innovative ways of funding research and we, we're busy scoping um, what are innovative funding models or if, if, if funders would be interested in doing funding differently. It seems like the work that you're presenting here would, would provide a really interesting um, yeah, space for funders to get in, in, involved with. Um, and we're gonna launch three workshops on that uh, in, the, in the next year, or in the next six months. And I'd hope to invite you or some of your partners to that discussion as well, because I think that's one of the biggest challenges all of us are also facing in this space is what are creative and innovative platforms that, that we can create that funders would be interested in to, um, you know, and, and how do we present ourselves to funders for um, allowing this creative work um, and collaborative work to happen. And I think that's probably one of, uh, one, in one direction that one of the questions um, are launched in the chat box. Um, <coughs> yeah, I'm just, can I go ahead and try to respond verbally, not yeah. by typing to also, cause it will be quicker and colleagues, yeah. please do keep coming and coming. So the first one from Steve was saying, where does most of the funding from the WRC come from? Okay, so we are funded by um, uh, the levy that is collected by the Department of Water and Sanitation in South Africa. So there's a specific percentage that goes to the WRC and you would know, um, of course, because then that it will not be enough funding that will be able to do all this lovely work that we do, which is why partnerships are very key and core to our strategy or business model. But um, our main, what we call basic, uh, we call it levy budget, comes from the Department of Sanitation money that has been collected through um, levy. And the second question also from Steve was about, is this uh, the res our research product or knowledge publicly available? <clears throat> yes, okay, if we get any royalties, if, if we, um, we had funded work. So our research, all of them, the reports are publicly available on our research uh, on the website, sorry, our knowledge portal. You can be able to download anything that you want. Then if you're struggling, feel free to always contact us. We'll uh, make sure that you do get the reports, but they are publicly available. And we normally have full reports and we also have what we call technical briefs, which is shorter reports for people that don't want to go through hundred page of a report thing. We have other specialized kind of briefs like the ministerial briefs and um, the parliamentary briefs and so forth. 
And um, with regards to any royalties, not really, but we have a tech transfer office that is, um, I know that we're looking at that. But for now, if we have funded your innovation, um, we really work according to them, the local um, um, intellectual property rights um, law of South Africa. So we will fund you. We will not get anything out of it, but then it has to be an innovation or a solution that will be publicly available or be able to be um, extended to the public of South Africa because that's why we're finding it's, it's public research funding, but we don't get any royalties per se from the work that we're finding. And, um, and we have also the um, Palma, thank you so much. Okay. Um, it's like thanking us and then. Um, We'd like to bring the African Water Research Universities Alliance Water Center of Excellence into the Water Hub. Do we, um, I, don't, I don't know which one is this one, um, yeah. African universities, but anyway, whoever would like to work with us, um, Tali, it's welcome to contact me because actually, and I'm assuming that this is either you referring to the Watershare Sub-Saharan Hub or the Human Rights to Water Southern Africa Hub. So definitely if you'd like to work with us, both of them are very newly, newly launched this year like not older than six months so we're actually now looking for people who could partner with us to then start implementing activities so do contact me if you'd like us uh, you'd like to work with us in the hubs um, to implement activities great so i think those were the three questions um, Rika, but i also see some traffic there in the chat box yeah. whilst whilst you're scrolling through the traffic i can give you a, a maybe just a break um, and ask maybe also some of the, this is not something that I usually do, um, but um, I, I see that there's some, yeah, some, some key stakeholders in, in the room, but if there's anyone that would like to maybe ask you something in person or tell you if you wanted to maybe um, expand on what the, you know, what the university's network is, I can make you um, to talk. <laughs> just let me know or just type if there's, if there's anyone that want, to, yeah, if you wanted to maybe connect but otherwise I think um, it's just amazing to see yeah the kind of creative ways in which sharing is happening and it seems that yeah. the building of partnerships on all levels uh, um, is becoming one of the, the key mechanisms or capacities that organizations can have to address uh, you know, the multi multiple levels of that of, of what needs to happen to, to engage with this it seems Tali would be happy to be um, unmuted, would, would that be okay with you, Mama? Yes, just before Tali comes on board, maybe to mention that um, I was very happy when we got invited to this webinar series because when we launched our Africa call, actually we didn't have a lot of um, response and it was very surprising. We did also two capacity building trainings in, 29, in 2019 um, alongside the WRC symposium open to the entire African continent, wanting to especially the young or emerging researchers and also the uptake was very low. So it is, I believe that it is through platforms like this that people will know about these things like the work that we're doing. And next time when we manage to secure funds to do capacity building trainings, or we have funding to fund project, we'll receive a, a good response because if we try to secure funds, but there is no uptake, you know what happens next time it may be difficult for us to secure such funding going forward. We'll give uh, Tali a chance to expand on this African university network that she was referring to. Go for it, Tali. Oh, thank you so much, Mama Claudine. How nice to meet you, even if it's virtually. I've been working with the WRC since I was a student, um, oh. and I really look forward to coming to meet you. Um, the African Research Universities Alliance is a set of universities across Africa that have decided to come together so that we know each other and work together and can um, field consortia of countries together into funding call. And Rhodes University Institute for Water Research is the hub and host of the Arua Water Center of Excellence. And we have nine countries that are nodes and we have access into nodes across all those universities. So it would be just really nice to come and present those opportunities. I can't believe I missed your Africa call. Um, you know, I watch the WRC a lot, so it seems like a missed chance, but I'm sure we'll be able to pick up. And then I see you've also got the climate change water, the climate change center of excellence is also represented here today. So it would be nice to link those together. Thanks so much. 
Thank you. Thank, thanks for sharing, Tally. Um, yeah, is there anyone else that would like to maybe have a quick, just a quick note or a quick voice? Uh, we, we're happy to, yeah, unmute you for a second. Um, and then, but it seems, um, yeah, that you've, that we've got a, a wonderful connection of, of people here already. And they've also sort of mm -hmm. asked again for your details, um, which I've typed up in the, in the list of participants. Um, and I know that you're also connect, you're also a speaker at an event at two o'clock. Maybe you want to make, is that open to the public? Yes, it is actually open to the public. And I wonder if I can just quickly um, post the link in the chat box now when we are at it. That's this is the Africa thing. Unity for Renaissance Conference um, that I hope you were aware of. But even if you were not aware of, I'm, I must not make a mistake and give you the speaker's link, connection link. Um, so so it, it, it's now, it has been running from 26 to 7. And today we are doing the, in, at two o'clock, we're starting with the closing plenary, as I've said, and I will be there. There's the link um, to, to join the Zoom session starting at two. And I'll be talking about the, the Africa, the, the Water Institute's Alliance. Uh, so, so Tali, I hope you'll be able to log in, especially, and the rest of you, because we, the WRC, together with partners, we've been trying to put together what we call the Water Institute Alliance, bringing together policy, private sector, public, you know, everybody together to say, let's work together, join our efforts to build a water secure. But the pilot is going to start with the um, SADC region. The aim is to be an African platform in, in, the, in the near future. So I'm going to be talking about this platform. Um, we call it WIA, Water Institutes Alliance, that we are putting together. But please do come also to the WRC symposium because we're going to officially launch that uh, institute or alliance of institutes in the WRC symposium. But for now, we're just going to be informing the participant of the Africa Unity for Renaissance Conference about that platform, because we want people to affiliate with it, whether we are a researcher, innovator, public investor, private sector, everyone. It's really a platform where we're saying, let's stop with the fragmentation, let's work together to build a water secure Africa. So please do join us in the session. It's starting at two. Great. One last question, and then we'll, we'll let you off the hook. Um, Steve was just asking, would it be important, it would be important that the work WCRC does is linked to, to policy decisions. Are they working with SADC, FANR, water sector? Seems clear they do. Uh, great work, thanks. Yes, um, so, so, so we do work with many policy makers at many platforms. Um, for example, even with the African Ministers of Water, AMCAO, we would work with them providing technical expertise as one of the leading knowledge and innovation. Um, although sometimes it's a bit difficult to prove or even ensure that they, whatever we are saying it's taken up, but there are many platforms where we sit and we do provide um, technical knowledge for the policy makers in the continent at large. Great. Thank you so much, Mama um, Loding. I'm going to stop our conversation here because I'm looking at the time and see you also have to prepare um, for your next meeting. Thank you so much for having, for being part of our webinar series and for sharing your expertise and your work with us and your links. Um, I'm sure we'll see, each, I, hope, I hope we can see each other again soon and connect with what you are doing. And I'm sure that, that there'll be a lot of people that will be connecting with you and engaging with the um, knowledge sharing and practice sharing links that you've been sending us. Once again, thank you so much. And it was wonderful to have you with us. Thank you very much, Rika and colleagues. And I really do contact me if you need us to, to, to have a further conversation. And I mean, we also do a lot of um, dialogues, workshops specific to an institution. For example, if you'd want to invite us to have a webinar together with your institution to get more information on a specific topic, we can always arrange that. So do feel free to contact me, um, but we do appreciate that you were invited here and we look forward to you and uh, now uh, being part of the work that the WRC is doing. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That's been great. And good Bye. luck for your talk later on as well. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thanks, everyone. And um, we'll be back in two weeks time. Um, and as usual, the, the video will be available um, on the CST website. Um, uh, it usually takes a few days to just edit and brand that, but we post it up and all of our webinars are available um, as YouTube links on the CST website, but more information will be shared 
on uh, the next webinars that will follow. So hope you have a nice week and uh, grateful you two for joining us. Thank you so much.